All right, I'm here at The Rock, uh, and I'm going to let my brother introduce himself. Let him tell you a little bit about his story. So, man, uh, tell me what your name is, first of all. My name is Robert Johnson, but everybody called me Robbie growing up. Okay. And growing up, for me, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. That's in upstate New York, for ones that don't know where that is. And life for me growing up was kind of bad. Really? Bad okay. in a way, as in just the violence, the violence that was centered around the city. Right. A lot of kids my age that were my friends, a lot of them you know, are no longer on this earth anymore. Really? And things like that. And currently in Georgia for a better and new experience of life right now. How long you been here? I've been here for about four years oh. from here. And I spent two years in Hoover, Alabama. And right now I'm currently in college. Oh, okay. College at Jefferson State. That's in Hoover, Alabama. I am in business right now. Where I see myself in five to ten years, yeah. I see myself as the richest man alive. You want to be rich? <laughs> I want to be the richest man alive. <laughs> And I want to have my own sports agency. I love sports. Yep. I see myself doing things around sports, whether it's coaching, yep. being an agent, or sports medicine. Either way I go, I just want to have my own sports facility in the next yeah. 10 years. Well, that's great, man. Uh, so why do you want to be rich? I don't want to be rich. Yeah. I want to be rich because a lot, growing up, I didn't have a lot. Yeah. And... I got tired of seeing my mom and everybody else around my family yeah. ask for things and yep. I just want to have the ability to give them what they need so they won't sure. ask for anything anymore. What, what's your uh, thoughts about the existence of God and afterlife? Uh, I feel like it's really important to establish a relationship with God. Yeah. Always good to have him in your life because whether we know it or not, he's yep. always there. He's yep. in our corner no matter what we're doing. And just God himself, he's just he's almighty. He's yeah. The greatest thing that we have right. that ever lived this earth. If somebody asks you, how do I have a relationship with God? What would mm -hmm. you say to them? Uh, I say, first, um, you can join the church. Okay, join, join the church. church. Um, just read. It's always <laughs> okay. read the Bible. It's always good to read. The Bible has a lot of knowledge, and it's always good to yeah. inform yourself on things. How would you answer this question? Mm -hmm. If today uh, happened to be the last day you had on earth, mm -hmm. man, I, I hope you live to be 200 years old, man. Yes, sir. But 150,000 people die every single 24 hours. Did you know that? I did not know that. That's almost two people per second. It is. So most people never really think about life after death. Mm -hmm. Most people think about, most of the time they think about putting their all their eggs in this life. Mm -hmm. But they never think about where they're gonna spend most of the, the majority of their time. Mm -hmm. And it, eternity is a long time to be wrong, Robbie. So if you were to stand before God today, mm -hmm. why do you think he'll let you in? Why do I think he'll let me in? Yep. I think God will let me in because I feel like me and him established something, yeah. something on uh, me and him personal level mm -hmm. that the conversations me and him had alone that to right. where we got something, we got something good going on. And right. I know that he's got me and just living the right way, I can okay. say. Creating, trying, trying to commit less sins. Yeah. We are not perfect. Everybody right. has committed a sin in our life. Right. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So how good would you say you are on a scale from zero to ten? Was zero percent like I'm I'm so bad I know I'm going to hell. Mm -hmm. Ten says I'm I'm Jesus' little cousin. I'm I'm on my way to heaven. What yeah. would you say you fall in? I say I give myself an honest six right now. Six? I give myself an okay. honest six right now. Just because of my recent transition. I haven't really been to church lately. I have not found a new church yeah. outside of Buffalo, New York, because I grew up in a church originally, mm -hmm. but since the move, I haven't really found me a new home. Right. More so as in church, so I say a sick just because a six. of that, but every now and then I've always read me a little scripture and yeah. pray. Um, so you would say that there's a 40% chance if you die today, you'll go to hell? <laughs> if you put it like that, <laughs> me answering it, uh, it's kind of scary, it, though. It is kind of scary, but. But I know, yes, as of right now, okay. I can say that. Because once it's over, man, you don't so, get a second chance like a video game, right? You don't. So you have any idea how to determine if your 60% 60 standard, if it's God's standard or your standard? You have any idea how to determine that, Robert? I really don't. Okay, because you, you want to figure out what his standard is. I because, do. <laughs> right? Uh, so you mind if I explain 
uh, his standard to you? Yes, sir. Um, you heard of the Ten Commandments? Yes. All right. So God is going to use the Ten Commandments to determine uh, your standing before God. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the Ten Commandment good person test. All right. So question number one. Uh, Robbie, how many lies have you told in your life? If you could keep up. I can't even count. All right. Me either. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I Seriously. can't even count. All right. So what do you call somebody to tell a whole bunch of lies? And it's a lie. A lie, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Robbie, have you ever stolen anything, even if it's as small as cheating on the test and stealing answers? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So you, you're you going to be surprised about this one. Jesus mm -hmm. said this about adultery. He says that you have heard it, it was said that you should not commit adultery. You know what adultery is? No, sir. So basically, I'm married. And if I go cheat with another woman, that's mm -hmm. adultery. Oh, uh, yeah, I know that. That makes sense? Yeah, I know that. But Jesus comes and he raises a standard. He takes it to a whole nother level that mm -hmm. I didn't even understand until somebody explained it to me. Mm -hmm. He says, and it's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. He says, you have heard it, it was said that you should not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. That was the old standard. Mm -hmm. But he says, I say to you, if anyone looks at a woman, just to think about her in an inappropriate way or to lust, you already have committed adultery in your heart. Robbie, have you ever looked at a, a, a girl to lust or had sex out of marriage or even watched pornography or any, 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 at any point in your whole life? Yes, sir. All right. So, guilty. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, also, have you ever been angry with somebody? You almost feel like you can kill them. Yes, sir. All right. I, I, I appreciate your honesty, man. Of course. Because I, really, that's what kind of where it starts. I'll show you a, a, a quick Bible passage. Do you have any idea how we break the standard of murder? No, I don't. Now I want you to read it. Tell me what okay. you think. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So if you've ever been angry or hated somebody, even in a moment, man, mm -hmm. the Bible says we're guilty. Oh, wow. <laughs> what you thinking, man? Oh, I'm just thinking, like, like this quote right here is just, it's crazy. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Let me give you one more. What letter is in the middle of the word sin? I. So a good definition of sin is I know what God said to do, mm. but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do, right? Mm. And that's that's idolatry. You should not have any other gods before me. Man, we do that all the time. Man, I was in college, man. I put basketball before God, mm. girls, everything, right? Mm. Have you ever been guilty of that? Yes, sir. All right. So, Robbie, I'm not judging you, man, but the summation of your resume right now mm. is you're a liar, mm. a thief, an adulterer, mm. uh, a murderer, mm. right? And a... Uh, and an idolater, man, and you have to face God on the day of judgment. It could be tonight or it could be a hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. But if you stood before God tonight, Robbie, mm -hmm. knowing that you're guilty, what do you think God should do to you on the day of judgment? Uh, what do I think God should do with me? Yep. Obviously, I don't know. Kind of concerning? It is. Yep. See, I didn't understand God's standard until I looked at uh, what the Bible actually said mm -hmm. instead of taking somebody's word for it. Cause I thought me just being a good person was like, surely I'm a good person. There's a lot m more people worse than I am. Mm -hmm. Surely if anybody getting into heaven, it's gonna be me. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about that? Yeah. All right. Well, Robbie, I, I'm explaining you the good news, so uh, I won't leave you uh, hopeless here. <laughs> Cause based on the standard, and where the Bible says that that God is a holy, righteous God, mm -hmm. meaning that there's no contamination in God, none whatsoever. It'll be like, uh, what's your favorite drink? Water. All right, let's just take one drop of sewage and put it in your, your drink. Mm -hmm. Would you drink it? One, top, one drop of sewage? One top, drop of sewage. You wouldn't drink it, right? Uh-uh. Well, if, you, if, you, if, if God let one of your sins into heaven without punishing it, mm -hmm. he would not be a good judge because it will contaminate all of the rest of heaven. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve sinned one time, and guess what it did to the world? It destroyed the world even as we know it. So if God is good, he cannot allow any of your sins to walk into his presence without cleaning it up. Right. And so the Bible says that the punishment for your sin is a separation from God in a place called hell because we're nothing like him. And mm -hmm. so in order to go into God's presence, you actually have to be as perfect as he is. But we can't be as perfect as he is. Exactly, Robert. Exactly. So, so how do we win? <laughs> I like that you asked that question. So how do we win? All right. You read this last, this good news. And this is what changed my life, Robert. So, man, I just wanted to give my life to this because I think when people understand this, it will change you if you allow it. Mm -hmm. So look at Romans 6 and 23, and then uh, I'll explain it to you. For 6 the and 23? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death, 